Hello, and welcome back to our special book talk series about the International Dublin Writers' Festival. For those of you joining for the first time, I'm Sabrina, and I'll be hosting this mini-series and giving you a sneak peek into the festival events we have lined up for September. Today, I am so excited to introduce Olivia Mulligan. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, for our audience, Olivia is one of our special guest speakers at the festival this year, and she's going to share a little bit about herself and the projects that she's going to speak about at the festival. So, Olivia, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself? So, your name, which I guess I've spoiled already multiple <laughs> times, but you can tell us again um, where you're from, your pronouns, and most importantly, this one's a bit of an unfair question, but what your favorite book or poetry collection is you can either say of all time or currently, because I know when people ask me, I'm like, don't ask me that. But <laughs> It's a big question, but yeah. thank you so much for inviting me on and it's lovely to speak to you. So yeah, my name is Olivia Mulligan and I'm from North Yorkshire and I'm really excited to be involved in the festival this year. Yeah. Um, I'm a poet myself and favourite poetry collection I'd say I absolutely love Holly McNish um, and uh, yeah I've recently had a lot of enjoyment reading her collection uh, called Slug which also has some short stories in there it's it's mm. really hilarious but you know a lot of thought-provoking bits in there as well highly recommend um, another poet I love is Kate Fox and and all her work um, so yeah <laughs> amazing I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna have to look at those are you are you reading anything cool like good now or um have you read anything like recently that's been great yeah that Holly McNish that's why it's on that's on my um that's on my mind that's my most recent oh. read which I've just absolutely loved um in terms of right now that's probably a good prompt for me to find something new to read because I need something new to read right now and do you recommend anything for me oh I mean I I'm not super good about reading like whole anthologies of poems but I do get a lot of really good like I I signed up for this um what is it it's called um where are you I think it's like a poem a day so I get a oh, poem wow. a day on my in in my email inbox um and they're like super they're always really different sometimes depending on the month they have themes like since it's June right now and it's pride month they've been highlighting a lot of like queer poets which has been really cool so you get like poems about the queer experience queer love yeah. but then you know during um, Black History Month there were a lot of like they were spotlighting a lot of like black poets and so I mean that's that's what I recommend I know it's not a book I'm but I definitely like, gonna have to look ever. I'm definitely gonna have to look that up because that was really inspiring as well I think to have something totally different every day yeah and it's free which is the best part <laughs> I love that I'm yeah I'm gonna do that when we finish this <laughs> yeah no, I had a professor and she was like, you should sign up for this. And I was like, no, I'm not going to like it. And I've found some of my favorite poems ever just from like randomly opening them in my inbox. Oh, that's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm 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 glad you want to check it out. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, back to you. Um, so I'm so happy that you're here because you're such a cool poet and like you're honestly an inspiration because I'm not a very big poet like I can't really write poems but I have like I just I think what you've done is so cool especially like poems on the gate or what's that one called it's the poems on the gate post advice from a stranger like those are both like so incredible and so I'd love to hear a little bit about these projects like how they get started like what was the experience of working on them like yeah sure and I mean I find it really cool that you've just mentioned the poem a day thing yeah. because that's how it started for me to be honest um mm -hmm. it was in the lo the first lockdown and I was given the letter saying that I needed to shield um mm -hmm. for 12 weeks I was in the clinically vulnerable category oh wow and when I got that letter like I did I just did not take that news very well I was really stressed and worried about what that would mean um because I at the time I worked in a cafe and so I couldn't even work from home 
so mm. it was kind of this really bleak looking 12 weeks and I thought what on earth am I going to do with my time and it was actually my mum who suggested why don't you write a poem every day mm-hmm. and I thought I might as well because yeah. I've got nothing else to do and so yeah doing this daily poetry challenge and then just within a few days I realized that it wasn't a challenge at all and it absolutely became my favorite part of each day writing Aww. these poems and every day I would pin them on the gatepost at the end of our drive for passers-by to read on their daily walk mm-hmm. and I left out my phone number for people to text in suggestions for the next day's poem and then you know the time actually went by fairly quickly and then after 70 days I had these 70 poems Mm -hmm. and the local radio station had heard about the project and they'd got involved and were really supportive that was BBC Radio York and amazingly to my absolute um yeah astonishment really is that a publisher then wanted to put it into a book and that's Mm -hmm. how Poems on the Gatepost was born um I can actually read you the first poem in the book because it kind of explains that story that I've just told you, if you're interested. That would be amazing, yeah. So, um, the lockdown clock. Lockdown clocks move slowly, ticking and then eventually talking. Tick, tock, tick to the tock. I watch the clock ticking, talking. Mocking our isolation, clocking our agitation, blocking our entire nation from thriving. Wrong, my mother told me. Embrace this time, she said. Use it to chase your dreams, face your fears, place your priorities, trace what's holding you back. Create space for a space to learn. Pause, breathe, slow down and showcase your passion. Lace your days with writing, inviting others to read, uniting people with prose, or even better, poetry. (laughs) That's such a lovely poem. I mean, that's so, uh, that's, I love, I I love the use of sound that you like having, like I could hear the clock and I could hear your mom, like, I don't know, I just, uh, Thank you. That was, okay. yeah, just a, an, an introduction into the project, really, which it's funny how these things happen sometimes just kind of going along with the moments. And, you know, there was really no intention of it ever turning into print. And I'm just so grateful now that people seem to enjoy them and sharing the book with people and doing poetry readings that festivals or in schools um I'm actually at the moment doing a little tour around um visiting the over 70s and um I'm doing workshops with um yeah like people that are over 70 Mm -hmm. and there are people that attend those workshops that are keen to listen to poems and they say oh but I don't I won't write any myself you know that's not for me I've never done any writing I don't know where to start And by the end of the session, everyone's written their own poems and they're all really excited to share it with the group. Mm -hmm. And it's really beautiful to see, to be honest, that um, just sometimes people just need that chance or they just need that encouragement to say, you can do it. Like it doesn't mean it doesn't need to be. I think this polished piece of work that maybe people think poetry needs to be, it just needs to come from needs to come from somewhere inside and any yeah. anyone can do that no anyone can do it and I feel like sometimes like the world there's so much inspiration in the world but sometimes just having like one direction or like a prompt just like someone to get you started with a prompt or like an idea and then it just kind of like totally run with it yeah speaking of prompts yeah I'll, um, I'll speak about um my second book advice from a stranger Um, because I had this idea to ask strangers for a piece of life advice Mm -hmm. and then whatever life advice they gave me that was then the inspiration for the next poem so the book is made I asked I asked 70 strangers to give me one piece of life advice and then yeah whatever they they said that's yeah the base for the next poem and it was so fun to do because uh it's such an eclectic mix Mm 
Yeah. And the the youngest person I asked was six, and the oldest was in their eighties. Mm-hmm. And I'd ask them at like really random places, like at the queue for the post office or mm. supermarket, uh, just on a walk. Uh, my favorite one was probably a lady called me up trying to sell me car insurance, <laughs> which I which I didn't want. <laughs> um but as I kind of you know politely declined I said oh but before you go could you give me a piece of life advice because I'm writing a book um so yeah they're a very um a real mix bag um in there but it was a a project or it was like a an idea to run with and that Mm. was where the inspiration came from yeah well you got to tell me what the car insurance lady said I'm dying to know (laughs) I think her advice actually was pretty generic but one we can all I think take from it was be kind oh yeah yeah so um I can't even find where that one was if you'd like me to read a couple from here maybe yeah if you had did you get like a favorite well that's me and my favorite questions like those are that's not fair but did you have like (laughs) was there one that felt like really salient to you or like that hit like home that you like I don't know I feel like all life advice is a great thing to write a poem about was but was there something that just like really flowed through you um for any of the poems that you wrote maybe quite a few um I think for a piece of advice there was from the I think she was an eight-year-old and her advice was spend time with the people you love oh and I just thought from someone so young like that's really beautiful that is that's so moving I think a piece of advice that really affected me personally, and I think it probably came out in quite a personal poem, um, was from a lady called Helen Vaux. And she said, don't follow the crowd. It's fine to carve your own path. I like that. I can read that one to you if you like. I'd love that. Um, It's called Career Goals. I'm going to be a doctor. A lawyer's my second choice. My nan thinks I'd be good at politics to be the people's voice. But I'm going to be a doctor. I'll be a pilot on the side. When dad tells folk I'm studying medicine, it fills him with fatherly pride. He didn't mind the little white lie. He thought my career goals were fantastic. Too young for college at four years old. My hospital was plastic. At the wise old age of ten, I broke some painful news. I didn't want to be a doctor. I realised I wanted to choose. My teacher spoke of possibilities. Perhaps the army with all the gear. I could work in sport or in fashion or I could be an engineer. At sixteen, my uncle told me an accountant would be stable. A side effect might be depression, but I've had the comfort that I'm able to afford a nice suit. Yes, money seemed to be important, and I wanted to earn more than my sister, so my teenage self wouldn't believe that my dream job would be a barista. So is it true you just make coffee? The just is emphasised. I just make the best coffee, and my life isn't compromised. But life is enhanced as their taste buds dance, as they sip the artist's work. Guzzling the knowledge of farming and roasting, I peacefully watch and I smirk. I smile daily as I witness daily happiness each day. Yet each day I'll witness heartbreak. I'll see loneliness and I'll say, this one's on us. So no, I don't just make coffee. I don't just pour, froth and swirl. I study laughter, blushing and silence, and I learn what makes the world. Oh, that's such a lovely poem. Thank you for reading that. (laughs) Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, it just, it's one of those ones where you, you think of anyone's 
job or like kind of those assumptions that you make of people mm-hmm. you know they they needn't you know they, they might not be true or you know they're just they're just living their life yeah. and yeah I feel feel really happy in what I do and that advice really just just clung to me somehow because <laughs> a lot of the poems that one like I said was quite personal and some are are much more random or I'm quite inspired by observing people so it there may be more observational mm-hmm. um but yeah thoroughly enjoyed the project and it's something that I actually do in the poetry workshops that I give quite a lot is kind of having that bit of a hook or even going from the advice and we ask others in the group and then we write our own poems. That's great. Um, so I have two questions for you. And the first is, um, did you find in your writing any um, like books or poets that like you found helpful for guidance in um, in your pro- like your writing process or was this like just your own like journey probably predominantly my own journey and kind of trying out different styles and kind of going with the following my instinct of what felt right on the day and obviously inspired a lot by my own mood maybe or um, how I'm feeling at that time but going back to my first book, actually, Poems on the Gatepost, the poet that I really love, Ian Macmillan, mm-hmm. I was following him on social media at the time, and he encouraged anyone and everyone to give sonnet writing a go. And I was already doing this daily poetry challenge, so I thought, oh, the next one might as well be a sonnet. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of listening and reading his work, um, that definitely inspired this poem, um, this sonnet which again I'm happy to share if you yeah, would like to hear it um and when I wrote this initially it was very much like it felt like almost like a big thing I thought oh I've not written sonnets since school and is this gonna feel authentic but actually it really did I loved it and I loved the process of it and it inspired me to go on to write quite a few more sonnets after that so that was definitely inspired by Ian's kind of nudge to give it a go and this one here so written in lockdown and it's called I wonder Um, I wonder if I wander there alone unknown eyes will stare watch to harshly judge Judge my feet on public paths of stone. Sharp eyes reflect my purpose as I trudge. Heaving my lockdown legs up hills, I'm free. Blood moves to circulate and rinse the doubt. But car park eyes, they'll soon latch onto me. Cold critique of my COVID whereabouts. I too critique the man with watching eyes. My rambling thoughts will question his desire. Our woodland wishes watered down with wise, and with bitter thoughts of others we conspire. I long for pine tree shadows without shame. Perhaps my unknown stranger feels the same. Ooh, I really like that one. Um, I, I'm thinking about it because I feel like sometimes sonnets can feel really mechanical but that that one just flowed so well oh thank you (laughs) thank you um yeah I love it's just yeah now since I've been in reintroduced to them um by Ian I'm I'm a big fan myself of the rhythm and reading them writing them yeah yeah I'm trying to think there was one ages ago I took a poetry class and I was challenged to write a sestina and I was like uh this is not gonna happen and it did like something about the form like is it the best thing I've ever written no 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 no. (laughs) but you did it (laughs) I did it and it's just there's I feel like there's something so cool about being able to like take a form and make it your own 
Yes, I agree, definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, and I this totally slipped my mind, but you like you mentioned this earlier, um, BBC York got involved with um the uh gatepost poems. Yes. And you were their poet laureate. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, congratulations, so, first of all. Thank you. So yeah, they were so you know behind this project and so supportive. And when the book was out, it kind of they just kind of kept inviting me on the show to to read more poems. And then they said, We're gonna need a title, we're gonna need some kind of title for this. Like, would you like to be our um, poet laureate and come on the show every Saturday and like read a new poem and have a chat about poetry mm-hmm. and yeah I said of course and I did that from 2021 and I'm um, yeah I'm still going in on a Saturday I actually did request um at the start of this year to kind of knock it down to once once a month rather than every week um just because life that is the honest answer you know I feel like I'm at the age where all my friends are like getting married and there's always something on a weekend or we're going away and um the once a month is still super lovely and I actually now I think get more excited about it um because it doesn't feel as regular so for example this Saturday I'll head into York um to the studio and read a poem or two and have a chat so yeah it feels a real honor and a real dream come true I guess if you'd have told a younger me that any of this would have happened I'd have never ever believed it I've always loved writing but never thought I'd be able to share it with people like I have done the last couple of years so yeah I just love it (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm so glad like you get to put your like writing out into the world. That must be like so fulfilling. And it is. Lovely. It is. I think maybe with everyone, sometimes you you think to yourself, how has this happened? Or why has this happened? Or I'm not good enough for this to have happened. But I think maybe those thoughts are normal. Um, but then I take a step back and I'm just grateful, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, I think we're kind of nearing the end of our episode but could you give us like a teensy weensy weensy sneak peek of what you're going to talk about at the festival in September just because that's that feels so far away but I I feel like people will want to know yeah well hopefully I won't be repeating myself too much at the festival but I'm basically going to be going through my my poetry journey and how I came to um yeah now be doing what I do and talking about the power of poetry and how much it has like truly truly helped me um and how I think it can help others as well um Mm. just the act of writing so yeah I'm kind of going to be speaking about the power of poetry and what it can do for us and I believe as well on the evening at the the dinner um the evening dinner I'll be sharing a few kind of performance uh poetry bits as well um to keep keep it light keep it cheerful (laughs) well I'm really looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to hearing your whole session in September Uh, again thank you so much for joining us um it was so nice to talk to you and I hope you have a great rest of your day thank you Sabrina take care And thank you to our audience for joining us for today's episode of Book Talk. If you're interested in attending the International Dublin Writers Festival, it will be running from September 15th to 17th at the Academy Plaza Hotel in Dublin. If you can't attend in person but still want to listen in and learn, we have online sessions available. So please go to internationaldublinwritersfestival.com for more information. And bye for now!